For years and years and years, the dog has been man's best friend. But now chickens are edging their way into that spot because chickens are pretty awesome. So awesome, in fact, that they have their own Chicken of the Month Club. And let's see if dogs can do that. This is where you can give two chickens to a family in need by only giving $28 a month. If somebody were to give me two chickens and go, here you go, here are two chickens, do something with them. I would have no idea. I would probably name them. (laughs) Uh, I would dress them up in sweaters. None of that. Yeah, but none of that does any good. But... In developing countries, people know what to do with chickens. Chickens provide a ton of eggs, which can provide income for a family that is struggling to break the cycle of poverty. They also provide nutrition for families. Don't tell the chickens that part. But they also can sell the chicks in the marketplace. It's a great source of income. We all talk about side hustles. This is a way you can invest in a family to help them break the cycle of poverty for just $28 a month. And it's by giving a chicken. So text the word chicken to 91979. That's chicken. Chicken to 91979. And all of this is made possible through our friends at Food for the Hungry. They do so much great work for the underserved and underprivileged, and you can be a part of that today. We'd love to have you get involved. Again, text CHICKEN to 91979. Welcome to the Wally Show Aftercast, all the stuff that we did not get to during the course of the show today. And sometimes there's things that happen that you uh, didn't make the air and you can't see. You don't even know what's going on unless we tell you. And that is the case right now. We have uh, our studio. The thermometer, the thermostat for our studio is in another room. And so if we close that door back there or someone messes with it, it freezes out our studio. And Betty Rock can never get her temperature worked out, like her body temperature. She has a blanket in here, an electric heating blanket to keep warm on cold days but then even on cold days some days she gets too hot with that so she brings a fan in and blows a fan and it's 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 just all over the map we never know (laughs) and today she was like y'all is it hot in here like i think pert near i'm starting to sweat okay i'm gonna take over from here okay so i (laughs) said because we keep the door closed when we keep the door closed there's a lot of equipment in here so you can imagine when your computer like starts heating up because you're on it all the time or your phone you start noticing it gets hot it's conducting right. heat and that's exactly what's happening in this small little studio so but I, gavin and i never say anything about it for the record like like neither one of us ever talks about because it because y'all are like cows in, Cow a, in field. a field yeah i'm Cow in gonna a field. do something yeah. about it if it's it. hot i'll deal with it and i won't change it if it's cold i'll do the same so thing so anyways <laughs> oh like you know anything about that you did open yourself up for that <laughs> yeah. gavin that was... okay so anyways i'm i'm sitting here and i say y'all cannot tell me you are not burning up hot it's ridiculous and Wally's like, no, I need to put my coat on. So he <laughs> proceeds to put his coat on. And I said, fine. I said, we're keeping the door closed. This is going to be a long aftercast. Yeah. And you're going to keep your coat on the whole time. And I'm that kid that if you told me not to do something, I would do it. Or if you told me to do something, I would not do it. And I would do it to my own detriment. I zipped this bad boy up. And it's a really warm coat. <laughs> and it's really hot in here. But I will pass out before I will take this coat off. Okay? I want to turn yeah. the heat up just oh, to you could, make you... And, and you could... You could try to sweat so me out. Uncomfortable. I could do. I, you know what? The whole time I'd be smiling at you, going, "I'm going to drop a few pounds." So <laughs> it's working out for me in my best interest right now. It's not working out for us because you didn't wear enough deodorant. Oh yeah, I'm going to sweat through this thing. <laughs> it, it is. It is. It is getting a little bit warm in here. <laughs> it's getting a little right. Yeah. I. Yeah. So actually, it is. <laughs> I'm, I'm actually. Yeah. I'm starting to sweat. I feel it under my armpits. I'm actually starting to sweat <laughs> well, right now. Too bad. Which I wish I'd shave my armpits like uh, John Cooper, who we learned uh, shaves his armpits, and we talked to him yesterday. Remember we were saying we had to do a faster aftercast yesterday it was a great interview with him like it gets like into his podcast and a lot of uh political stuff and and i just like that he's just become very vocal about things and he's really morphed as a person from like this rock star to this guy that studies philosophy and i just it was a really good conversation for that we'll have gavin post all of that stuff next week and we'll play some excerpts of, of it on the show but it was a lot of fun and we did a game where Betty pulled uh, a bunch of 80s rock stuff and we did a riff off where who could name the song based on just the guitar riff and it it was so much fun. You pulled all the great songs but the band was all in here and having a good time. It was just a really good time and we hadn't talked to John and it's got to be seven or more years since I think we had him on. So, Mm -hmm. yeah, it was a lot of fun. All right, here's some of the stuff we didn't get to. Uh, The Florida Surgeon General, Dr. Joseph uh, Ladipo, I'm not sure how he pronounces that, so forgive me, but he declined to disclose whether he had received the coronavirus vaccine or not during a contentious confirmation hearing where Democrats were pressing this doctor, and actually the state's top doctor, to promote vaccines. And so they're asking him about 
his vaccine status. And he basically was like, uh, you know what? That's my personal business. <laughs> you know, you can't do that. I know everybody gets outed for their vaccines. HIPAA laws don't even, you know, apply. So he kept sidestepping it and just not saying, which mm-hmm. was crazy. Uh, so when pressed about his status, he said it's a private issue. And he continued on to say, I personally believe that people can make their decisions for themselves with information, and I think that in some ways they will probably make the decisions that they're most comfortable with if elements like uh, coercion and misrepresentation of data or hiding data are not part of the process. So here's the Surgeon General of Florida, which obviously uh, Ron DeSantis is a Republican, and there's been uh, you know people debating this and his handling of COVID, uh, but so he's this is like his guy and so the democrats aren't happy about that and especially where they want everyone to get vaccinated you've got the surgeon general saying no i think that we have a problem with misrepresenting data and we've lost people's trust and that's why they're not getting vaccinated Mm -hmm. and then him hiding or not hiding but not being upfront with his status is blowing their minds like but i love it like to me that rebellious kid that's wearing a jacket despite how hot it is love that you know yeah i just like the other was it last week when the California governor or something. Oh, Ron DeSantis. Or not Ron DeSantis. Um, yeah. Gavin Newsom. Gavin Newsom. Yeah, he was yeah. seen at a football game <laughs> not wearing a mask. Yeah. And they're like, why aren't you wearing a mask? Because you mandated them in For California. Us, yeah. And he's like, well, the rules are different well, here. Th- but see, that's, that's the thing. That's stupid. If so you, then you're saying, yeah. you're saying if you're a Californian, right. then masks work. Right. But if you are wherever he was, right. they don't work here. See, that's the thing. That's Be- dumb. And that's what has driven people crazy about Corona is the inequity in that. So theoretically, your big thing, follow the science, follow the science, got to wear a mask, got to wear a mask. I'm going to lock down everything because I'm the governor of California. Okay, fine. Uh, and then you go to somewhere else. So the rules aren't the same, but if you believe the science, then you should be adhering to the science. But obviously, Mm -hmm. you don't believe the science yourself. You're a hypocrite, and no wonder people tried to recall you, you nut job. Like, I love, like, like, to me, I'm like, I I would recall him again if I was them. (laughs) Well, and it just goes to prove, you know, when you are trying to preach to someone and you're Mm -hmm. using all these words and stuff, that's not going to get anyone on your side. Like, you have to live through your actions. Actions speak louder than words. It's the same way in our faith. I mean, honestly, like, if, if you go to church and you say, all the right words at church, but then you're a different person at work, then your witness is greatly affected, mm-hmm. or your effectiveness in your faith is greatly affected. If you don't treat people the right way, if you don't uphold uh, godly principles or ethics or morals in your work or your you know livelihood, then it, it suffers. I, la- I just get the biggest kick out of people when they run for like president of the United States, and then all of a sudden, they have to show a faith side, you know, because they don't want to lose the religious right, you know, right. and they have to show that. Look, look, I mean, I'm obviously Republican and you can hate me if you want, if you are one, if you're a diehard Trump fan. But that was one of the biggest shams, in my opinion, of the Trump presidency. I, I would I would have no problem with people saying, hey. Uh, I voted for the guy because I think he's going to be fiscally good for our country. Is he a God fearing man? Boy, the evidence is not there, mm-hmm. you know. And and like and 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 vote that. That's fine. But there were so many Christians that felt like they had to justify maybe voting for him because of his his, his life because his life didn't match up with it. I know the, all the mess going into that. But then they're like, no, God, this is God's man. That to me was one of the biggest I think tragedies in this, and one of the things that really off put people from Christianity if if his life mirrored Christian principles and you voted for him like that and you told people that it wouldn't be a big deal mm-hmm. it'd be great it'd be mm-hmm. awesome but when his life is so far you know from that publicly and then you herald him as God's man no wonder people were like I want nothing to do with you nothing at all to do with you mm-hmm. I think that was super detrimental to faith and to the Republican Party because then it makes it look like you're just justifying somebody because you are, you know, you're greedy and you just want money and you hate, mm-hmm. uh, you know, the left side politics. It was it, that was that was a big thing. So I mean, look, I I try to see myself down the middle of a lot of things of politically, even though I am a Republican and I adhere to the fiscal policies of of, of more of the Republican side, but like socially, I'm down the middle. Like I think. We we do need to have social programs, but they need to be balanced. They need to have a series of checks and balances, and they can't be just 
like widespread give everything to everybody either you know i think mm-hmm. there needs to be things you have to build into that to, for people to work and because work is healthy work, jesus uh, god started us off with work from the first day in the garden there was a job to do you know because why it fulfills us when you just give people things and you hand things out it doesn't it never builds anybody up it never makes them better it only makes them worse and so there you go that's a little politics let's uh Woo! I felt good. I felt good. I'm, I'm like channeling John Cooper. Yeah, uh, you are. Because his, his, I told him this like after we got off the air. I said, man, I said, so many people uh, try to do podcasts and they're really bad. And, and you might be listening to this going, yeah, including you. Uh, <laughs> but like, like they're really bad. They don't prepare. They don't hold a conversation well. They're not uh, dynamic. And like, I was like, I was so surprised at how good he was at doing this from being just a rock guy, you know? And mm-hmm. like, he surprised me. So I think it will surprise people. Well, he must be pretty good because I know he's made it on some news channels, you know, talking about. He's on his, Fox News, yeah. Right. Ma- talking about his podcast or talking about his thoughts on particular things so he must be yeah. pretty eloquent yeah he's, he's, he's actually really good at it yeah. and it's interesting though because uh in the interview with him we talk about like his tattoo and i said oh yeah man like uh you got you had never gotten one before and i remember you telling me you were getting you were getting one and and he's like man you remember that and i remember a lot of stuff because i remember one time i said well john aren't you a wordsmith and he's like i don't even know what that means you know <laughs> and so to see him from that point to being a guy that's talking about critical theory not critical race theory totally different but critical theory and theology and apologetics and uh, postmodernism, you're like, what happened in 10 years to you? But he got motivated and he educated mm-hmm. himself. Like, said he read, what, 150 books? Yeah, a- like, about like uh, on this subject of what oh, is going on in our postmodern world where all of a sudden there's no absolute morality anymore and the absolution of God and his principles is the thing that is the decline in civilizations. This is really good. And I I think what we're going to do, because that ended up being like an hour yeah. long conversation, I think we're going to end up posting that whole thing. Yeah. So um, you won't, you'll get to hear it from the horse's mouth. We'll Absolutely. Post that. Not today, Whew. but whenever Wally gets around to editing it. All right. So here's a little bit of- Are uh, you hot? Yeah, I am. Uh, actually, yes. <laughs> uh, Lady Gaga is reacting to what uh, some people are calling an Oscar snub for her. Really? Yeah, because she was in House of Gucci. And so people just assumed, and early indicators like, oh, she'll get a nod for Best actress yeah uh leading actress and she did not Uh oh. but i'll tell you she handled it very graciously she took to the gram and was like congratulating other people and people that she knew from house of gucci that were nominated for things and Ooh. was really really like this she played it smart really like that's where you walk away from that and you go good for you you know now let me give you a high a high hypothetical. hypothetical situation okay you starred in not I can star. only imagine. I can only star. imagine. Thank you. Yes. You made an appearance. In American Underdog. Yeah, those two movies. <laughs> well, that that's a stretch with sure. American Underdog. But I we'll agree. say Fair. what you say only imagine. Let's say everybody got nominated for certain things. All my co-stars? Yeah. Yes. Mm-hmm. But they <laughs> didn't nominate you. They yeah. even said the best cameo appearance. Yes. For a sports and broadcaster. They, yeah. It looks so specific. And they they nominated everyone yeah. that you were with but did not nominate you would you handle your, yourself as respectful as lady gaga or would you be classic wally yeah. and burn the place down i think a leopard does not change its spots <laughs> Uh, like uh, as my mama always told me, to uh, I would be passive aggressive. <laughs> I'd be I'd be snide. <laughs> so no, she did she did a really oh, good gosh. job. Um, instead, uh, the uh, Oscar nominees were Jessica Chastain for the Eyes of Tammy Faye, uh, Olivia Coleman, uh, Penelope Cruz, Nicole Kidman for being the Ricardos. I just saw that the other day. Actually, it wasn't bad. It wasn't great, but it wasn't bad. Um, it's funny because the Eyes of Tammy Faye. Um, I just looked that up last night because I was going to watch it. I missed it in the movies. But I saw the trailer for this. And so, like, my friends uh, that were, like, really, really super close, they're not, like, believers, you know? Mm-hmm. And so this movie came on, and I'm just cringing the whole time because it's the story of Jim and Tammy Faye Baker from right. PTL and the abuses and just all the mess. And it's just it, – it's such a black eye on Christianity and so they were watching this, and, and we always watch trailers, and then we comment about them. I'm like, oh, yeah, that looks pretty good. I, I would see that. And I'm like, I just cry. And they're, they're like, yeah, I would see that. Like, no. 
Mm -mm. Like I get telling a true story, you know, and trying to depict it and and outing it for what Mm -hmm. it's worth. But then you're like, where's the redeeming quality? I'm going to watch it on uh, HBO Max. I want to see it too. But I want to, I'm curious if there is any sort of redeeming quality at the end that does help point people because if it was done by like a Christian production company I would think they would tell the story like if the Irwins handled it they would handle it way differently than a lot of mm-hmm. other people I think that they would handle it and then have some sort of redemptive quality that didn't disparage the gospel you know yeah but if it's just a mainstream you know movie company doing it they're going to tell the salacious story right and that's where it's going to end well that's what happened when I was watching that documentary I told you you need to watch about that girl with the big hair yeah by the way uh on that mm-hmm. I was trying to look it up and it's called way down and, mm-hmm. and it's all about losing weight and her weird philosophy with that mm-hmm. I spelled it w-e-i-g-h to find it mm-hmm. and it's spelled w-a-y like what like way down, like instead oh. of way down. And oh. so I couldn't find I it at first, it. and then I accidentally Did you watch it. it? No, I've got it on my favorites list. It It's like what you said. There's no redeeming quality to yeah. it, but it just tells the story about how questionable the decisions that she made, the whole church made, and then it just makes more people question anything to do. And I'll admit, when you get into the religious side of things, it can get dicey because it's run by sinful people. Absolutely. You know, but it really comes back to not religion, but a relationship. Because if you have the right relationship with Christ, religion doesn't matter. It's that's what why the veil was ripped in two when he was crucified because we're right we're made right in the image of him so we don't need to follow all of these rules now he did make rules so that we could live right and that that's what he wants but if you have that right relationship with him you'll want to follow some of those well all of those rules yeah some yeah the murder thing <laughs> Most, you're like eh, yeah. I mean come on they Stacey, deserved it do you know my neighbor no <laughs> <laughs> um yeah, that's the thing like with this I get that there are abuses inside of the church, but and it's really frustrating. And I understand why you want to cover things up sometimes, because mm-hmm. the greater good, you're hoping not to uh, dissuade people from following Christ. Because the reality is, there there was, a, what was that movie uh, or TV thing, Lord, uh, Save Me From Your Followers? Like, because a lot of people... When you look at what Jesus said, it's not a lot you could actually hate about Jesus because Jesus is talking about love. But what people don't like is what we've made it. They don't like his followers. They mm-hmm. like they don't like the way that we've made it very hypocritical at times or the and way that is. we've but destroyed it. I'm telling you, if you if you put your religion, your faith in how other Christians exactly. act, you're setting yourself up for failure. But it's I've a, always it, contended, though, that a lot of times God is working on people's hearts and they use the church, they use flawed Christians as an excuse to not really deal with what God's doing in their life. Mm-hmm. They're like, well, they're all bad, so I want nothing to do mm-hmm. with them. And and, and and they use that as an excuse. And the sad thing is we give them that excuse, mm-hmm. you know, uh, when God's really trying to do something. Yeah. I think, like, I love uh, Andy Irwin who, who did... I underdog and imagine and a bunch of other movies, but like I love when he was doing the Jesus music documentary and it was supposed to be a a look at behind the scenes, Christian culture in the Christian music business and the good Mm -hmm. and the bad. And I like what he said when he was talking about trying to get people to do the interviews. He's like, I'm not interested in your scandal, but I am interested in your story. Mm. Like I want to know what happened, but what, was the outcome what made you feel what were you feeling during this you know and it's not to be salacious but i want your story and your heart behind that i thought man that is really smart you know because if you look at the bible the bible has all kind of jacked up stories in it and they're there so that we can learn what the consequences of sin is and 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 that there is redemption for our mistakes you know and it's and it's great and i think movies are the same way there is if you tell it the right way if you tell it with that angle of okay there is a little bit of mess but there is the happy ending i guess or in the in in christian terms the the god redemption part of the story Mm -hmm. so all right well do you got any birthdays for us lady rock i do not Woo! that was fast but i have a question okay this is from i'm starting to get nauseous i think i'm getting so hot on my jacket <laughs> Good. And so if you listen to the beginning of the aftercast and haven't skipped uh i am i'm starting to get queasy <laughs> good 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 i'm good. planning i'm planning on this being another in here another hour i don't so. i'm not gonna make that <laughs> so joanne 
She wants to know what would you what would be one thing you would tell your twenty one year old self? Mm, she must have a twenty one year old. Yeah. Mm. I would say this. I would say if you want something, get out there and get it. Yeah. You can't wait for others. Now that isn't giving you permission to step on people's heads and sure. take advantage of people. But learning people's names goes a long way. Making a good impression goes a long way. I know you enough to read between the lines in this that I think, because I've known you since you were 22, I think. Something like that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so I've known you a long time, maybe 23. Um, but the thing is that you, for a lot of years, did not necessarily find your voice. And then you found it, and it's super loud. Um, <laughs> Thank you! Yeah, and so like you would let things happen, and you would let things roll and build up, and then you would have a, a, a explosion about them. So I think what you're also saying is it's not about this be this hungry person that's just going to own the business and, and run the place. Yeah. But it's more like speak up for yourself and and, right. and, and and be honest about what you want out of something and feel. Well, don't have a victim mentality. Yeah. So you could, you could easily say, well, they're not giving me um, a chance or right. is it because of my skin color? Or is it because that I'm a girl or a boy right. or whatever? It, it, to me, at some point, it doesn't really matter because it your work comes first. Mm-hmm. So if you do a good job, they're going to let you in. Absolutely. Your work is your is your security. And if it doesn't work out, just scream till they let you come. Yep, that's it. Like my rule in radio is do it first, do it best, or do it loudest. That's how I've lived my whole career. So if, you want, if you're the innovator, that's awesome. If you're mm-hmm. the person that takes what other people are doing, but you do it better, you stand out. Or if, you're the, uh, if, if none of those th- two things work, you just be louder than everybody else <laughs> so that everyone else gets drowned out. That's how, you, that's how you succeed. Also, I would say work on your confidence. Confidence is a big thing, and yeah. it will take you further. Now, Gavin, you don't have to go back as far. You only have to go back what five, five years, years uh, for this now. What would you tell? Probably some of the things we're you? saying. He'd be like, he needs to write down. I know the part of it is that, yeah, like <laughs> talking about junior year, maybe senior year version of myself. I think I would have like told myself to ask more questions about adulthood. <laughs> <laughs> just because I don't think I, I don't think I hit the ground running in a way that was very uh, effective. Yeah. When I first like you know went out to be on my own and be a husband and all those types of things. Like I think I, when I was getting o- older in that range of twenty one, twenty two, I was asking my dad a lot of questions about certain things. But I should have asked more, and I should yeah. have asked more people, grandparents, mom, like just all these people about. Things that I needed to be more ready for than I was. And it's not to say that they didn't, pre- like, not to say that my parents didn't prepare me, but I think that at that point it's on me to figure a lot of stuff out. So I don't think Honestly, I did a great job. As a parent, there are things you think your kid knows, and then they call you one day when they, they're they out on their own. How and do you like, boil how? water? Yeah, like, how do you not know this? Yeah. I know I taught you this. And so you're not alone. Like, they're, like I, when I was your age, when I moved out, I thought I knew everything and thought that I was an adult and stuff. And it, it took, took me years to realize, okay, you don't. And that kind of dovetails into mine. I, when I was younger, what I would tell 21 year old self is that, um, don't pretend like you know everything and that you don't make mistakes. Like that was my big thing. I never wanted to own a mistake. I thought if I showed a mistake in business that it meant I was weak or I was dumb, I was not effective. Mm -hmm. I shouldn't be there. All of the insecurities with that. And so I would do anything to, to not own a mistake. And so it, it took me years. And then years later, I learned that there's power in owning that mistake it's freeing because then you're not trying to cover it up and you're not trying to uh you know you're not making people mad because people know when you mess up like mm-hmm. i know i know when we when each one of us messes up i know you know and it's like when you own it then there's grace but when you don't own it you get very little grace from people mm-hmm. and so being able to to do that would have saved me a lot of headaches and hassle early in my career that i had to learn from later so Mm-hmm. There you go. All right, with that. No, 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 no. Still no. nauseous. I'm ready to go. <laughs> no, oh, yeah. no, because y'all said, oh, it's not that hot in here. I'm going to put my coat on. 
No, you're going to sit Gavin, in it, Gavin, can guys. you open the door, please? No, <laughs> you're going to sit in this. All right, and that's going to do it no, for your aftercast. And as always, no, thanks for being no, a potty. No, I have something to